Hello, everyone. It's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. This picture is something I've seen multiple times on social media from my friends that are sort of anti-EV or, or have been duped into thinking that EVs are bad either by their friends or their political persuasion or whatever. But this is something that I see uh, showing up on social media quite a bit. And basically, the implication here is that electric car batteries are uh, are a an item that's going to wear out and you're going to need to replace it um, soon. And I think most of them think, oh, yeah, after like eight to 10 years, you're going to have to replace the entire battery. It's going to be essentially the price of the car. And um, this is why electric EVs are terrible. But that just ignores all reality and facts about the longevity of um, EV batteries. EV batteries will probably outlast the chassis and every other part of the car. Okay, so let's look at the information that we have. So there is a study from Recurrent Auto. They looked at all the Model 3 and Model Y um, batteries over the course of about six to seven years. And the this was actually not looking at battery life because we know from test loop that um, Tesla cars that were fast charged and abused by doing the run from LA to Vegas uh, multiple times a day um, for many years, they I think they had several vehicles with over 300,000 miles on them. They had still had like 85 to 90% of their, um, their battery uh, capacity left after putting about three, 400,000 miles on those vehicles. This was a study looking at how much does fast charging impact the battery life. Now, it's kind of common knowledge or accepted dogma that fast charging is hard on batteries and fast charging degrades battery life. That's because fast charging puts a lot of thermal load on the battery. Um, and it's and uh, that thermal cycling is tough on the battery. So what they did is they looked at vehicles that use frequent fast charging and rare fast charging. And what they surprisingly found out is that the thermal management, at least on Teslas, is good enough that the fast charging does not seem to make a difference. If you can you look at those two lines and they, they track pretty well together, and you can see that most of the degradation happens in the first year to two years. So, you know, 365 days would be about here. And so, you know, this is two years. So most of the degradation is going to happen in the first two years. And you'll have like 92% of your percent of your capacity left. After that, it flattens out quite a bit. And after, you know, about f five to six years or seven years, you still have about 90% of your battery left. And then it levels off. Um, same thing on the Model Y. That's no different. If you look at this study of Tesla Model S's and X's, which, you know, obviously there's, they've been around for a longer because they were introduced earlier. And you can see that at 200,000 miles, you these vehicles, so you can see how it like drops off initially and then it really flattens off. At 200,000 miles, they have high 80% to low 90% um, percent of their capacity. And this will likely, and we know that um, if you extrapolate this out farther to the right to 300, 400,000 miles, it stays above 80%. So you still have lots of usable range on these batteries um, after 200, 300, 400,000 miles. And there's very few people that are using their cars for 300, 400,000 miles. Um, th there is a guy that's using, that has a Chevy Volt that has 400,000 miles on it, and he has not noticed any degradation. Now, Chevy Volt is a plug-in hybrid, so not all of the miles will be on the battery. On, in this case, it was 35% on the battery, which still equals about 150,000 miles on the battery. And the other thing to think about is that the Volt battery is much smaller. So it's being cycled from zero to 100 every single time that it, you, you're going to deplete the entire range of that battery, um, give, you know, other than the little safety buffers that the manufacturer builds in. So this is the worst case scenario for battery usage. It's being charged up to 100% and drained to um, zero multiple times in a plug in hybrid. And even in this scenario, this Volt is doing very well, no noticeable degradation. Um, after 400,000 miles on the on the vehicle and about 150,000 miles on the battery and on a much smaller battery 150,000 miles is like way more cycling probably equivalent to about half a million miles on a full EV uh, battery cycle and then um, this is a guy Andy Sly he's a pretty well-known Tesla um, uh, uh, Tesla YouTuber and he's got 135,000 miles on his Model 3 
and he still has over 95% of his uh, battery life. So he really babies his battery. So, it, so these are average use case scenarios, this and this graph. And in just average everyday use, using fast charging, depleting the battery, not babying the battery, you're gonna have you you can expect to have ninety percent of your battery life at two hundred thousand miles, and over eighty percent at like five hundred thousand miles. But if you really baby your battery and treat it nicely, don't fast charge, don't you know charge it to eighty percent, don't deplete it down to twenty percent, and really try to take care of the battery, you can have a scenario where you have over 135,000 miles on your vehicle and still have about uh, over 95% of your capacity. So almost no capacity loss um, at that point. Now, the flip side of the argument is every once in a while, there are gonna be problems with the battery. There can, there's gonna be like manufacturing defects and um, like damage to the battery, like in accidents or, or things like that. This this is this is a recent video that went kind of viral. This a uh, Hyundai Ionic, they was they were quoted to um, be sixty thousand miles to replace the battery. Now the car itself does not cost sixty thousand dollars. Of course, this is Canadian dollars, so it's a little different than U.S. dollars, but still a lot of money. Um, the they had some road debris hit the undersurface of the car, and it hit the uh, the battery protection plate, and it caused a dent in it. And then the dealerships claimed that the battery was dangerous and needed to be replaced um, totally. If you watch the whole video, probably the battery was fine. They never even opened up the battery, but the insurance paid it out. They totaled the car, they paid it out. Um, and But the, the damage was pretty minor and the dealership was probably being um, overly aggressive for it. This got went up to corporate. Hyundai told them has offered a discount on a car to this to this customer, and also told the dealerships that they cannot demand uh, replacement batteries as the repair of choice without going up to corporate because this battery probably was 100% fine, and the, only the plate needed to be reduced. Re and then this was another, a similar story, except way more damage. This is a Hyundai Ionic 5 in Indonesia. He had this kind of damage. And they essentially took apart the battery pack, replaced the modules. You can see here that this module was dented here. You can see the dent right here. And they, they rebuilt the battery pack and they charged him. And you can see his invoice right here, which is 122 million um, Indonesian rupiah that is approximately eight thousand dollars US so a lot more reasonable uh, for that amount of damage and you can see this was a different uh, uh, ionic 5 battery pack a steel crowbar went through the bottom and you know in these scenarios these are just pretty severe scenarios they um, the battery was fine it did not explode or anything like that and um, and the they still repair them so in other countries, they're repairing them. In Canada, they wanted to just replace the whole thing for basically cosmetic damage on the plate. So this, um, if the battery is not damaged, the battery will outlive the rest of the car, okay? If the battery is damaged, it, like if there's a bad enough accident, yes, I mean, there's if you have a bad enough accident, it's gonna total any car, uh, internal combustion, EV, whatnot. But uh, one scenario that you would have to worry about is road debris that hits the undersurface on an ICE vehicle is probably just going to hit like the floor pan of the passenger compartment or some exhaust components, which are fairly easy to replace and not that expensive. But usually the, the batteries on most EVs are in the floor pan um, to keep the center of gravity low. And um, that distributes the weight well and makes for better handling and such. Um, it may damage the battery, and that's true for the Aptera as well. And so the good thing about the Aptera is they're building it with repair in mind. Now, I suspect the battery pack itself is not user repairable. Um, I, I think that the modules probably need to be thermally linked to the cooling plate. So it's going to be pretty hard to replace it. But, you know, I'm hoping that Aptera will do like some trade-in of the battery pack. You can get a whole new battery pack, and they would... Um, at least repair the module much like uh, like they did for this uh, uh, Ionic 5 in Indonesia where they just um, took out the modules and rebuilt this module, the one that was damaged by the road debris. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to make this video because I saw this um, so many times and just so much mis it's it's so misinformed 
that um, I wanted to kind of push back against it a little bit. Again, bottom line, batteries that are not damaged are going to outlive every other component of the vehicle. Okay, they're going to last half a million to a million miles and no one drives their car that much. And even after they're used up, they can be used for a stationary storage for a long time. And then finally, they can be recycled. So um, that is kind of a, uh, that is information that comes out of being misinformed. But um, if they are damaged, if you go to the wrong dealership, they will ask for something ridiculous. If you go to the right dealership, they will repair it. And Aptera is probably going to have a mechanism by which the battery can be uh, repaired. And obviously, the battery um, they're gonna you're gonna be able to buy the battery pack for you know what the battery pack costs, which is not gonna be more than the cost of the entire vehicle. Um, so I I know that Aptera has said that they are really pro right to repair. So I'm hoping that they make the battery in such battery pack in such a way that it can be repaired maybe not by the end user in in terms of like damage like this but that the battery pack can be replaced uh, in whole by the user and that maybe you can trade in your damaged battery pack and they can repair it at the factory all right well let me know what you guys think in the comments below thanks for watching guys have a great day